what we uh, did in this study was to actually correlate giving patients different doses of the drug and then test the effect of the drug and exposure to the drug on both inhibiting the pathway as well as on the symptoms. And what we show is as exposure increases in the doses that we tested, and we tested here, it was a relatively small study, but it, it tested patients at three different doses of the drug, 300, 400, 500 milligrams per day. We show very clearly that there's an increase in the ability to inhibit the JAK2 pathway when you look at these patients' blood. So clearly, you're achieving the biological effect. And then we show that as you increase the dose, you get more responses. The response rates in the spleen go up so that you have more patients responding as you increase the dose. And that taken together tells us that we have identified the range of doses that is likely appropriate. We're confirming it in phase three, which we've completed the enrollment of, and we'll be reading out reports in the second quarter of next year. But it not only confirmed the dose, it clearly showed the strong linkage here between your ability to get an exposure that modulates the biological pathway and your ability then to also impact what's important on the patients. The final piece that we show out of this study is actually the pharmacological properties of the drug, which we started learning in phase one. We actually confirmed here it has a long half-life. This drug can be given with once daily dosing, all of which are things you look for when you're uh, trying to devise a treatment that will be appropriate for patients to take uh, long-term.